Hey, what's going on, guys? This is For Those Who Died, coming to you with a new solo dungeon run. Today we're going to be doing City of Ash 1. Let's go ahead and make our way to the dungeon. Just going to show you some simple tips and tricks, the schematics for each boss, and how to get through this without dying. So I know I haven't made a video out in a long time. Just wanted to let you guys know I will be making a build video because I do have a new PvP build that I've been working on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll show you guys that on the next video. Alright, so just to let you guys know, I am Vampirism Level 3. Just gonna uh, show you guys that you can get through this dungeon without being a vampirism level one. You can get through this. So right now I am wearing my PvP armor, but the only reason why I'm wearing it during this dungeon is because there are there is a lot of heavy fire damage, and I need the heavy armor to just stay alive. So we're gonna go ahead and make our way towards the dungeon. So if you guys don't know what a dungeon is, it is in green shade. It's about a southern western part of the map. Alright, just wait for this to load up real quick and I'll show you the very first thing you should be doing when you get into the dungeon. Basically guys, as soon as this loads up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our way towards the left. There is a waterfall. You're going to go ahead and you're going to jump into that waterfall and hopefully make it to the bottom alive. So here we go. We're just going to uh, show you guys exactly where the waterfall is. So as soon as you spawned in, you'll spawn in somewhere around here. You're going to go ahead and um, not take that path that I just showed you. You're going to take this path right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump down the water, the waterfall. Hopefully it won't die. <laughs> Boom, we did it. All right, we're just going to follow this all the way to the left. And make our way around. So if you guys look up on that tree, if you didn't take the waterfall, you would be coming out somewhere around there. So let's just go ahead and keep following this to the left. I'm going to go ahead and cross this river. Make our way behind these trees. And in between this rock and this mountain. Go ahead and stay to the right because there are NPCs to your left. Alright, so now we just bypass all of those NPCs and we are at the first boss. So let's go ahead and burf, uh, buff up. I'm using Volatile Armor and I'm also using Flames of Oblivion. We're using Elemental Blockade, Burning Embers, Engulfing Flames, Flame Lash, and Eruption. Now, if you guys haven't watched my previous videos, I'll try to explain which, uh, what skills do what. <clears throat> so this is my back bar. So right there, I got volatile armor, coagulating blood, um, elemental blockade, burning embers, and force pulse. So volatile armor is just simple, just to get my uh, armor up. Uh, elemental blockade for the AOE damage it does on the floor, like right there. Uh, burning embers to get my health back and to put a small dot on the enemy. Um, I use uh, force pulse when I'm dealing with long range attacks like archers and things like that, sorcerers. Uh, on the front bar, we have uh, flames of oblivion, which is just a small uh, dot that you can put on yourself that will attack the enemy. Uh, what I think uh, three or four fireballs 
before it actually goes out. And then we got eruption. We just put that on the ground right there. And that's just a little burst AOE in the beginning and then it's followed with a 20 second AOE, which is really good. Uh, so you only want to put that down probably once every two rotations. So a couple flame lashes. Make sure to keep an eye on your magic, guys. Keep an eye on your stamina. You want to be able to block during some of these hits. Especially when he tries to stun you there. I'm going to use Burning Embers instead of coagulating blood to get our health back. Now, that's where a lot of people like to make mistakes is they'll, they'll rather self-heal than use uh, an attack to self-heal. And um, using an attack to self-heal is actually a lot better because you're still doing DPS while getting your life back. And Burning Embers really doesn't cost that much. So just hitting Burning Embers over and over and over again, you are doing damage to the opponent while getting your health back, which is really good. Uh, what Burning Embers does is it uh, puts a small dot on the enemy, and depending on how much damage uh, occurs on that enemy, that's how much you get healed for. Um, uh, one way to turn this into a better healing ability is putting Major Mending on. So like things like Igneous Shield that will give you Major Mending as a Dragonite, you would do that before the timer went off or before you would place your second strike. So a lot of people think... Um, you know, burning embers, you know, it takes a really long time for it to heal. But what a lot of people don't know is there's a little trick to the burning embers. Uh, what you can do is, um, once you place your first burning embers on, you have about 8 to 10 seconds before you're going to get that heal back. If you need that heal before the 10 seconds or 8 seconds is up, just go ahead and reapply burning embers and you will automatically get that heal back. So just applying burning embers over and over again, spamming it, basically gives you your health back while putting out damage. So it's really good to have that attack. So we're going to go ahead and pass all those NPCs, go ahead and cross the river. Um, don't use the bridge here because you will be seen by those NPCs right there. Just go ahead and follow it up. Um, right here, there's no way to get past this. You're going to have to fight. So the way I like to do this is I like to take out the archers first. So let's go ahead and make our way towards the archers. All right, we got elemental blockade, eruption, burning embers. I'm trying to put burning embers on at least two uh, NPCs just so when they die, I get that health back. Because right now you see me at low health. I'm kind of just struggling right here to just get that health back. You always want to have it on at least two to three NPCs. And then once those NPCs die, try to reapply them on the rest of the NPCs that are that are surrounding you. So as soon as I go in, I always start off with Elemental Blockade. It's one of my short AoE damages, so I like to put that one first. Because by the time I go uh, around to my rotation, I have to reapply it. So around the second time the rotation comes, I'm already reapplying um, Elemental Blockade. So like right here, guys, you want to go ahead and uh, go for the long distance NPCs first, the ones that are shooting fireballs at you, uh, because the Dragon Knight NPCs and just all of the physical NPCs will follow you around. So placing that AOE damage on the floor around the long distance NPC attackers is essential. You want to be able to bring all of the NPCs into one big group, and attacking the archers is one way to do that. So right here is going to be the first boss. He does have a couple moves um, that you have to watch out for. He has a, a flame blast that he does, like right there, That's that was it. He also has um, a heavy attack that he does that basically stuns you and does a lot of damage. But as long as you're block casting, putting your AOE on the floor, it shouldn't be that hard of a fight. Alright, we found a heavy sack and we found a chest. Let's go ahead and just open this real quick.
All right, there we go. We're going to make our way up this hill. There is going to be another boss on the top of the hill. Um, he is going to do the spinning AoE fire damage that you're going to have to watch out for. He likes to put it on the ground a lot of the times. And he also does a charge up heavy attack that you need to watch out for and block that also. He also is a night blade, so he is going to do that rushing night blade move that I freaking hate. I don't even know what it's called. I don't want to know what it's called. And I don't care. <laughs> So like I said guys, just watch out for that heavy attack. He just did it on me. I wasn't paying attention. Alright. Just keep putting your AoEs on the floor. Making sure you're staying out of his and block casting through that. Making sure you're keeping burning embers on him at all times for that self heal. Now as soon as you start to learn this self heal uh, with burning embers guys. Um, you probably won't be using Craglining Blood as often as you think you would. As uh, Craglining Blood does cost... A little bit more than burning embers so healing with burning embers is just in my opinion just a little bit better to do so there goes that heavy attack block through it now i'm out of magicka and i'm running low on health let's go ahead and use burning embers to get that back now as you see i'm all the way to full health just with one burning ember strike now it, it's good to time it because of that 10 seconds you could do it at eight seconds or nine seconds when uh when right when it's about to run out Making sure my dots, block casting. Now I'm just gonna execute. And there we go. Now, a lot of people, they like to jump onto that tree right here, but we're not gonna do that. Cause every time we jump on a tree, there's a chance of us dying. And that's just one more uh, thing we have to worry about. So we're just gonna go ahead and take another path. If you come over here to the right, there is a little ledge that you can jump down from right here. You follow this all the way down. And look at that, I didn't die. Isn't that crazy? And also, when you come down here, um, it's better to do this because then you won't aggro the NPCs that are right at the bark of that, uh, that tree house. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna follow this around. Just give me a second, guys. There we go. All right, so we're going to follow this around. We're going to go ahead. We're going to go into the water so we can uh, go past these NPCs. Now, I do want to mention, guys, that if you do do it this way, there is a chance that you will aggro some archers and not even know about it. And they will follow you around the map. And they will punish you if you don't take care of them. So watch out for the archers. Watch your health. Make sure you're not taking a little bit of damage here and there. If you are, that means you have an archer following you. And you have to take care of him. So before we start on the next boss, we're going to go ahead and take care of these NPCs in this tree bark. So just like that, those NPCs are taken care of. And we're going to make our way over here. Now, I like to use this entrance to bottleneck the NPCs, which is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to head heavy attack, aggro them, make sure they come over here. We're going to put our AoEs on the floor. There we go. Now we bottlenecked all the NPCs into one AoE. Now we just got to take care of the long distance NPCs and we're good to go. And there we go. Now, if you do not block cast through that, guys, see now, see how the boss didn't show up there? That means I have an archer somewhere around here lingering. And there they go right there, guys. The archers I was talking about. So if just remember, guys, if you do do the dungeon like this, there is a chance that you will aggro some archers and they will follow you around. So just make sure that if the next boss doesn't spawn, that there is some archers in the background that you haven't taken care of. So here we go. We're at the next boss. And this boss is pretty simple, pretty easy, actually. Um, she does throw fireballs at you, which does a little bit of damage, but you can survive through that. She is going to do those little lava pools that shoot up, those little AoE things. Just make sure you're not standing in them, and you're, you'll just be just fine. This this move, um, uh, she does it at once every so often. See, like right there. 
So it's really easy to dodge. Uh, sometimes you don't even have to worry about it that much. And she does stay in one place. Uh, so it is good to just put all your AOEs down on the floor, put all your dots on her, and just stick to your rotation. And you should be fine doing this fight. Um, if you find yourself a low health, don't forget about Burning Embers, guys. Using Burning Embers is probably one of the best self heals for a Dragonite. And there we go. So on to the next one. Okay, we're going to make our way up these stairs. There are a couple NPCs. And again, guys, just go ahead and start your rotation off. Heavy attack, elemental blockade, burning embers. Go ahead and talons them. Put eruption on the floor. Flames of oblivion and make our way to the flame astronaut that's sitting in the corner doing absolutely nothing. All right, so here comes a few more NPCs. We're just going to wait for our Magicka to get back. All right, there we go. All right, so the same thing, guys, using Talons, Eruption, uh, Flames of Oblivion. It should take care of all the NPCs. It is good to have two AoEs on your bars, so that way... Um, when you have a lot of NPCs like that, you could take care of them. I use uh, Burning Talons to just make sure they stay in our AoEs. So here goes our another boss fight. This one's pretty simple too. She uh, does a couple moves that you have to watch out for. She is going to do this windmill thing with her sword. Uh, she's going to spin it around her head. So you just want to make sure you're out of that AoE and that's it right there. And she does power up for a heavy attack that you have to watch out for. And her ultimate, which is this right here. Uh, she is going to clone herself. Just make sure you have your AoEs on the floor before those clones pop up. And they should die instantly. So there goes that heavy attack I was talking about. You just have to block through that. And you should be fine. Make sure you stay out of that AoE. Make sure you stay out of that ultimate with the clones. And keeping your AoEs on the floor before the clones pop up. And you should be just fine. Remember to keep burning embers for that self heal. Engulfing flames, push your dots. And here we go, burning embers, getting all that health back, just like that, guys. And I put another dot on her, which is very important to keep your DPS going. Alright, so now we are at the final boss. And it should not take too long. It's usually a heavy sack over here, but we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to go ahead and take care of the boss. Alright, so if you guys see, there is a lake around here, and the lake is here for a purpose. It's not only to slow you down when transitioning from island to island, but it also takes off the burning status effect that he applies on you and the fire astronauts apply on you. Um, if you find yourself at low health and you are burning, it's best to jump into the water real quick to get that effect off. But um, otherwise, if you are wearing heavy armor and you're kind of tanky, you could be able, you should be able to get through this without uh, without hesitation. So here goes a a little bit of the mechanics to this boss. He is going to spawn some flame atronachs, and he is going to jump from island to island just like that. Uh, just make sure that you only apply um, your eruption one time because uh, he is going to stay there for about 20 seconds and that's as much as eruption will last for. So try to put eruption on uh, about your third move that you put on him during your rotation. Alright, just keep whipping, get some uh, magic back. And remember about burning embers, right guys? Placing burning embers, making sure you get that self heal. And there we go. So that's pretty much what the rotation should look like if you do it right guys, right there. Uh, just running up to him, uh, light attacking, putting elemental blockade, burning embers, and then switching to eruption. That's usually how you want to start the attack with this guy and then just make your way through your rotation. Um, Elemental Blockade, it uh, usually will be placed twice before um, he has a chance to get away. So it's good to place that at least twice. 
So again, using burning embers to self-heal. We got that flame Atronach in the background shooting fireballs at us. Now, usually we would have uh, scales on to reflect that, but um, we're wearing heavy armor right now, so we can get away with it. So I am on fire, guys. If you see those red numbers to the left of me, um, that's the status effect that I was talking about. If you are wearing light armor and you don't have enough champion points in thick skin, that will bring you down very fast. So if you don't have that many points in thick skin, I highly recommend putting some points into it. Or you can just go ahead and use the lake um, to your advantage and get that burning status effect off of you. But um, I am going to tell you if there are a lot of flame atronachs on the floor like there is now, um, there's no point of jumping into the lake because the burning status effect will be right on you as soon as you get out of the lake. So let's go ahead and take out some of these ads because they were getting out of hand. I'm going to put eruption on the floor. I'm going to keep light attacking and try to execute this guy. Now, I know that he's at low health right now, but remember, guys, don't get carried away. If you don't have enough Magicka, just go ahead and start your rotation over again, and then that way you won't die. So right here, I'm going to show you how to take off the Burning Status Effect. I'm going to jump into the lake, if I can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I jumped into the lake. But yeah, I was a Vampirism level 3 here, guys. Just wanted to show you um, that you can do this at a high Vampirism level. Usually stage 3 is the perfect balance, but uh, if you are going to use uh, vampirism abilities like Blat Swarm, uh, Drain Essence, and Mist Form, you do want to be a vampir vampirism level 4 because it does help you guys out. Alright guys, so that was the solo dungeon run of City of Ash 1. Really happy you guys tuned in. Um, I will be making a build video for this very soon. All right, I'll catch you guys later for those out.